با نبات بذاری داخلش شاید بریز نبات بذار داخلش مرسی نه نه نمیخواد من خودم نمیخواد Some more jet in the storm also. Also in the class. <laughs> Sorry, you can't stop now. Okay. Yes. Okay, let's me. Thank you. Thank you, Diga. Welcome. You're welcome. Can you see my presentation? Yes? Can yes, you see yes. my Yes, yes. All, all good. All good. Okay. Sound and uh, presentation. Okay. Let me start with my presentation. Okay. 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 <coughs> Salamu alaikum and hello everybody. I hope you are all doing well. My name is Mahmoud. I'm from Ferdousi University of Mashhad. I'm a faculty in uh, economic and administration, administrative science in the Department of Accounting. I've got my PhD from uh, University of Sussex in England 10 or uh, 12 years ago, and I am now uh, teaching in accounting and auditing in Perdusi University of Mashhad. At the same time, I'm working in the industry as an auditor. So today, I am here to present a, a subject calling a challenge of accounting education. You know, what's we need today, we need to learn something in university and practice in the market. What market ask from us? They ask from us to learn something in university and practice, practice there. So we need to adopt ourselves with all the market uh, needed. So, uh, today I'm explaining what's the challenge of accounting education, especially in, uh, during the COVID-19. So, you all know what happened after the COVID-19. <clears throat> everything is collapsed, everything stops, the life is different. If you compare the life before and after the COVID-19, you can you find something totally different. So in the education sector also, we have the same situation. So uh, before the COVID-19, all the class for accounting were online, were face to face. Only a few classes uh, run online, but after the COVID-19. All the classes change to online, uh, online. So we need to understand what we need to prepare, especially how we can adopt with the accounting education during the pandemic of the COVID-19. So for this reason, I'm going to explain what happened uh, here and how, what we can do. So I'm going to explain. I'm, uh, firstly, I'm doing an introduction about the subject. Then I'm going to explain the importance of soft skills and technical knowledge in accounting education. And inside into accounting education in the COVID-19 world. And after that, I'm going to present the paper 
called the COVID-19 and Digitalization Accounting Education. So I will going to um, explain another paper is called Accounting Education, the post covid war after the COVID-19, what happened in the education, and new approach of online accounting education. So now we are going to explain this. The growth and needs of online education, what we need in online education, and what is online education, and the strength and weakness of online education, and finally, the future of online education. So, this is too much, and you know all, this is too much. I haven't enough time to cover the two hours, but I'm going, going to just, you know, open your mind about this subject. So, <clears throat> I explain very briefly all this uh, material, and after we finish, we have some time to review you, and if you have any question, if you have any subject to issue, if you want to explain something, or we can uh, some uh, debate about some things, if you have any question. Anytime you have a question, just raise your hands, ask your question, I can explain you by the time. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so, what is the COVID-19? COVID-19 COVID is a pandemic had an impact of increasing our synthetically as well as having the impact on many changes. I explain. So there are a lot of changes in the life, in the regulatory, in the policy. So all expect in the economic, so the economic changes after the quick 19. So the pandemic has caused disruption in various institutions, organizations, and companies, universities, and so many. So the lo a lot of business <clears throat> a very sharp decline. So of course, this situation is a challenge in itself in the world of education as well, especially in accounting. So you can see the accounting is too much different with so many subjects. So if you, can, you compare the accounting with the history, it's too much different. You can teach history online very good. But how you can explain balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, and how you can explain this during the online education. So this is too much different with the accounting and the other subjects. So we are currently faced with two big challenges. The industrial revolution four and the COVID-19 pandemic. So the compilation of which is not yet now, when it will end. That the world of education must, must anticipate changes in the curriculum, so students do not miss opportunities of learning process. This is our mission. Policies must be carried out in such a way that learning continue to be effective. We was maintaining that the accounting education that we provide on the public remains relevant to the need of society. What society needs and how we can prepare ourselves to the society. Because of some cases in COVID-19 pandemic, has accelerated the process of change, or what we often call the industrial revolution. You can compare two years ago or less than two years ago, before the COVID-19. So, <clears throat> 
if they, uh, somebody asks us, okay, how will be the education with online? Okay, a lot of people so uh, say it is not good. And it is maybe some of them say it is impossible to teach accounting through the online. And a lot of facility we need to do a run a class by online. So, all countries were affected by this pandemic. For an economic point of view, economic decree, um, growth decrease, even a negative one, as well as social aspect, many people lost their job, changes, in interaction between individuals and so on. So you can see in your life. Therefore, it is necessary to carry out config management between the health and economy sectors. So we need to choose between that. The closure of activities result in conflict between health and economy. So this is why we run the class and in education section online? Opening of physical activities, health will be trade. On the other hand, the economy will move. You need to manage these two in order to move together. So, for example, in the education environment, green and little category can be open physically. So, it's with it. The orange and red cannot be open, no? so you need to do everything online. So in the world of accounting, we argue that the COVID-19 pandemic has had a huge impact on financial reporting and in the educational sector as well. Those affected are, of course, Profits, then there are subsequent events. Gain concern, risk issue, impairment, therefore, OJK related authorities provide regulation to overcome the impact on COVID 19 on campaigns. So, apart from financial reporting, Auditing practice have also changed. You know, the main, the, the uh, big impact happened in the audit, auditing sector, especially for on the level, lack of direct interaction. How you can audit online? How you can do in your job online? Because the audit process is carried out online. These changes require education to continue to improve accounting to their needs. So we need to prepare ourselves. We need to prepare our students. We need to teach our students to be able to do doing auditing online, doing accounting online, prepare financial statement, and doing all job online. These are several aspects that, ha that have changed in accounting. And of course, as educators, they must also solve this by ensuring that a curriculum runs and a student competence improve. So, in the world of education, the objective of education learning not, or, not only teaching, because there are differences between learning and teaching methods in the world of education. If we teach, we teach the content, what the subject is, like parents feeding their children, which learning is more about how to learn, how parents feed their children. That is, by giving children feeding is learning. 
uh, sorry, by giving children freedom is learning. But feeding is teaching. So, I'm going to start a present one paper titled A Commentary of Learning Objective for Accounting Education Progress. The importance of soft skills and technical knowledge. So if the pandemic happened, if the industrial revolution happened, if everything happened, so as an accounting student, we need to improve our soft skills and technical skills. We need to improve ourselves. We need to improve our students. We need to learn how we can face with this new world. So this paper, so explain about how we can do. Statement of accounting education generally call for increased emphasis on the development of students' so-called soft skills. So soft skills refer to skills such as student communication skills, critical thinking ability, and moral skills. So we need communication skills, critical thinking ability, and moral skills. What are these? An issue that has been absent in the accounting education with Richard is whether soft skills can be effectively taught or development at the undergraduate level. Can I teach a student in the undergraduate level communication skills? And whether accounting professors are trained and skilled to take on the responsibility or the professor are now how they can learn, teach communication skills, critical skills, critical thinking, and moral skills. What is this? Due to limited thinking or uh, training hours, we have a limited time training hours in the uh, university. The effort to develop soft skills depend largely on the technical knowledge on the train. This article further questions the balance between developing soft skills and accounting technical knowledge. Dr. Mahmoud, sorry. Yes, Doctor? yes, yes. yes. Uh, your presentation is not working. Ah, now good. Okay. Oh, it's not working. Sorry for that. <laughs> Now it's okay? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay? Yeah, okay. it is. Okay, okay, let me open. Okay, so what we need, uh, so if I, you know, make it as a presenter, uh, let me have a look. Does it work now or not? Yes, yeah, the screen is showing. Is okay sharing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, with increasing emphasis on developing soft skills due to time constraint of education, technical knowledge should be emphasized. It's because on how accounting professor giving their expertise and make the most of the limited time they have to train a student and prepare them as an accounting specialist. Higher education in institutions like university increase student professional opportunities and create more jobs by attracting a student and providing them with degrees. And also send their 
uh, of students to learn in the university and got a degree in order to achieve this positive career and the financial result and got a job. One of the factors that affect a student education is the cost of a student education. Which higher student education in institution can provide more education for a student by fearing of tuition fees. One way to achieve learning goals of accounting at the university level is to use soft skills such as communication and critical thinking. Universities must strike the right balance between the time and education that a student must receive, given the limitation of teaching hour per degree and the cost of education. So time education, the balance between time of the student, limitation of the teaching hours, and the cost. Different soft uh, field of the study, like history, like geography, like another study, another required different soft skills. So emphasize is place on a specific skill as so that they can be using the different fields. Okay, soft skills is not just for accounting; is it for for the life? The most discussion of learning objective for accounting education. According to a statement published by American Accounting Association and Professional Association accounting firm, his learning objective are primary focus on preparing students for employment in accounting. One of the main message of the statement of accounting education is the progress and profession should emphasize the de development of soft skills or broader skills that are capil capabilities beyond technical knowledge. So these skills include, but are not limited. Writing or oral communication skills, critical thinking, ethical awareness, and team working. There are all other skills we need to learn. The communication, the statement are successfully implement accounting education progress will train technically qualified graduate ethical and critical thinking with the necessary communication skills self related and they are effective members of each team who communicate more easily with others self relevance <coughs> Lesson provide a competency based education framework that could be relevant to a variety of accounting career in 2014. The proposed framework include accounting competency, such as external reporting, tax reporting. Extensive management competencies such as leadership and basic competencies such as communication skills, technology, critical thinking, and problem solving. So today we need more, and we know now we feel we need more critical thinking, soft skills, and communication, and also. Lesson in 2015 explored how to integrate fundamental and broad management 
competition into the accounting curriculum and demonstrate the process of accounting integration. So here you can see the process of the balance of learning objective for accounting education progress program. But several questions arise here to achieve learning goals. For example, are accounting professionals are right people to help development of soft skills? Or we need to uh, help from us from the other subjects? For example, Excuse in the management me. sector or others. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry, yeah. Excuse okay. Me. Just I okay. want to tell you, please, that the, the slides of the PowerPoint is not moving. And kindly, we want to read with you, if you don't mind, huh? It's not moving? Yeah. So, so if you don't so mind, yeah. Because we want to read with you, and uh, some we, maybe there is uh, some notes we want to write, if you don't mind, huh? Yeah, that's great. Right now, now is okay. Now is moving? Yeah. Right now is okay. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, okay. Thank Thanks you for thank Thanks you for uh, letting me know. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any problem happen, please let me know. Okay, because you I have just concentrated in my presentation. Yeah. And I, I don't know what happened in other side. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're this is, okay, this is the, another problem with you no know, online education. So we cannot, you know, uh, make a face-to-face -face, uh, presentation. I, I don't know what happened in the um, behind of the screen. Sorry for that. No, it's okay. So that, definitely, all right. Yes. Okay. On accounting, professor, the right people to help develop the students' soft skills, or we need to ask from the other side. Do accounting professions have the appropriate training to respond effectively to this responsibility? Or, or does focusing on soft skills development create more cost? If we need to learn soft skills and concentrate on that, do we need to ask the student to pay more tuition fee? Or can students' soft skills be reliability assert? And another question is, can soft skills be developed in an education environment? What is the soft skills? In this paper, these authors Concentrate on these three soft skills, communication skills, ethics, and critical thinking. The first one is critical thinking. What is the critical thinking? Can anybody um, tell me what is the critical thinking? In as anybody can define what is the critical thinking? In what, in from your point of view? Yes. Uh, can you say it again, uh, please? What is what? What What is the critical thinking? Can you define critical thinking? What does mean from your point of view? Critical thinking. <clears throat> Okay, critical thinking. Yeah. yeah. Say. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me. It's uh, it's how the how you are able to explore essential ideas, for example. Okay. Very good. Very yeah. good. Anybody else have any any other idea? Okay. <clears throat> yes. The critical thinking does not have a universally accepted definition among those who specialize in this field. <clears throat> yeah, this is very, you know, 
different. You may define critical thinking in one way. If somebody asks me, maybe I define critical thinking in another way. If I ask somebody else, they can say another thing. So the critical thinking is not, is have not a one single definition. In their study, in this, for example, Barrel in 1998 asked a group of general accounting to simply define critical thinking. Simply define critical thinking. Participant in this study is very you know, interesting. Participant in this study were characterized by good communication skills, crazily confidence, initiative, and ability to plan and anticipate, and other personal skills and characteristics that are not usually associated with the critical thinking. Answer this question. You can see a different thing about the critical thinking. The results initially raise the question of whether the professions now what to ask for when accounting students need to do better in critical thinking? So, to our professor, now what is the critical thinking? If I don't know what is the critical thinking, how can I, can I, can I teach this to my student? So, it is not yet clear what stakeholders mean when they want to think critically about students and whether the term has a general meaning of, of common sense or a questions of ideas. So we need to first <coughs> define it. There are there is another important question. Can the ability of accounting a student to think critically to develop without extensive technical knowledge of accounting? Definitely no. Because critical thinking generally shows itself in relation to some identifiable issues. Crofo argues that the problems with particular courses in critical thinking is that the question posed determine the value of the research. And that is that it is difficult to ask intelligent questions without a broad knowledge of the subject. So first, we need to have the accounting knowledge. Then thinking about critical thinking about our subject. Mackeck was one of the first state that critical thinking isolated from a particular subject in both conceptually and practically meaningless. And Williams strongly supported this view mean when he stated the critical thinking requires knowledge and practice. What this article claim? This article claim accounting education as a technical subject is essential for the student with the potential to develop critical thinking ability. The notion that we know what critical thinking entails can be taught of critical thinking students. And the student should be professionality, professionally about accounting without extensive education. 
even if critical thinking is clearly definable and student and sufficient accounting technical knowledge so the question remain whether undergraduate student have the ability to think critically and the research by Barry and Peter report the most college students develop a level of critical thinking that is low on critical thinking. There is another question that we need to answer it. So the critical thinking abilities, it is unclear whether critical thinking is important in the early year of an accounting or whether it is better to use over time to be used later in the profession. Of the ask, do we need to teach a student from the beginning of the they are starting accounting education or no? Or we need to or do we need to postpone the disability, this soft skills ability to the later years? For example, lesson in 2014 acknowledges limitation in their framework for accounting education. For example, the ability to develop course core competition in undergraduate in state study is limited. And this competency must be developed over the time. It's not you cannot blame the student in just for example, in one semester, two semester. You need to teach them, you need to learn them during the time, over the time. Focusing on developing the critical thinking abilities of accounting on the graduated student at the expense of developing technical expertise is likely to produce poor results for both competitors. And there are another software skills that we need to teach our students is ethics. You all hear about the financial crisis. You all learn about what's happened in 2000 in Enron and WorldCom. They are bankrupt. This was an accounting scandal. It was all about the ethics. The Arthur Anderson are not use ethics. So in two thousand there are a accounting scandal and analytical scandals were happening. So due to the moral scandals that have occurred in accounting, for example, in 2000, yeah? Paying attention to this issue of ethics is one of the important issues that has been considered. There is evidence that education has a minimal effect on the ethics of graduate in the field and this does not mean the education and ethical issue in accounting is insignificant because accounting students should be clearly exposed of ethical issue related to the profession. Okay, there is some argue about this. The ethic is complex competence in the which university education can play only a limited role. Okay, you have a limited role, deliver limited subjects. But you can 
learn the ethics from your life, parents and family members, because they have been content with the person in the beginning and for a longer period of the time. And person behavior influences by them. How we can learn ethic in the university? We can say that the person behavioral structure is formed before entering the university, and university and education can have a limited impact. One of the concepts that is discussing the subject of the ethics is that issue of Freud. There is a risk of change of exam for students in the large and crowd classrooms and even in the online courses. The rate of chat, chatting, chatting, in, cheating increase. They're cheating in the exam, in the online. In fact, before the student entire the university, this concept of cheating was formed in the mind of the students. McCabe found in the study that the significant percentage of middle school students cheat. And it is taught that this cheating behavior can continue into high school and college. Crow in 2012 represent 80%, let's see, 80% of higher high school students cheat in some way. 85%. So you can see how big is it. And 125 Harvard students had shared answer in exams in a particular situation. 125. The New York Times reported in 2011 that the number of Chinese participants in the SAT exam had forget resume for admission to prestigious U.S. university as an example of immorality. You see what happened? Forget resume to admission. Despite the effort of professors, there is always some cheating because the motivation for cheating is as long as the score and describe. The case, sorry. Another reason for the student cheating is that a student with until the last minute to start doing their homework. Because the students are looking for a way to get the required graph. Great. They have no time, just they do it. In the last time, last minute, so they, they are going to cheat. Accounting for professions, professors, and managers need to see how they can teach ethics in an environment where some fraud is likely to occur. And where fraud is more than expected. And Beadles and Lowry shows the moral education as an immediate effect on cheating behavior, but may not have more effect in the long run. Excuse me, there, Professor. Okay. Excuse me, in, yes, your view, yes. in your viewpoint, because you said about the percentage of uh, cheating from the yes. people is the 80%, approximately about 80%. 80 yeah. Okay, so in your viewpoint, what is the reason behind that? 
There are a lot of reasons behind that. The main Some reason. Of, yes. One of the main reasons. Okay. One of the reasons is, you know, is the pressure. And the, and the another reason, you know, we, we, just, we just ask a student to get a mark, to pass the exam. So, we don't need, we don't ask them to learn something. We're just thinking about, okay, what's your final mark? If you're just looking for my final mark, so I try to increase my final goal. Because you judge me about my point, only my final mark. This is only me. The another way is, you know, the culture of the, and the atmosphere of that. There are a lot of reasons behind that. So we should, you know, change something. For example, instead of we ask, we only check the final mark, we can, you know, evaluate the student during the course. We can ask, doing something during the course by themselves. We can ask them, you are not only thinking about your final mark. So, I think this is the way. So, so from the beginning, I yes. guess from the beginning, it should be explained by the criteria that the students are going to see. Yes. Including the mark. It's like a motivation for them, right? Yes. So yes. To create a good atmosphere for them and in order not disappointed them because they will mm -hmm. put in their mind in, in the final exam, maybe they are going to fail. Okay. So of course. there is a lack of motivation from the lecturers. Yes, of course. Of course, of course, and also the, the education system, you know, we need to, we need to improve and change the education system as well from the high school, you know, of board. You know, uh, nowadays I think in the, in the primary school, they change it. They don't mark a student, they just give them a good uh, or very good uh, middle or something like that. It's not, uh -huh. it's not, not a, uh, quantity they are they are evaluate them quality you know if you change some um, mark system maybe it happens it works thank you very much well, you're good. welcome the question that arises here if it is education does not significantly affect the risk nature or frequency of fraud, how can this education be expected to make accounting graduated more ethically professional? If they cheat during the school, if they're cheating during the university, do they do, do they work ethically? Regardless of what ethics say many students from the core of their ethics at an early age and addressing their issue in the college accounting classes has little effect on their current or future behavior. Examine the fraud that their beliefs had changed in the ethics class. At the end of the class, they care less about, they care less about customers' need and product quality, and more about shareholders' value. And the third software skills is communication skills. Communication skill is accounting training in research studies have been identified as an important competency for accounting graduates. Communication skills generally include the ability 
or to write, speak efficiently. Write and speak. When a little graduate has been provided on the specific writing on oral communication skills, that should be developed in accounting graduated and there is disaggregate, disagreement among researchers about the importance of specific writing skills. So writing skills and oral skills is a part of communication skills. So you need to be able to read your report, prepare your report, write your report, send your report, in any place. The result of the survey conducted by really and Simon showed that grammar and spelling are very important in writing and it is clearly is less important while studying by bits. Clarity was considered the most important future of effective communication. Especially if you are an auditor, what do you need? To, you need to report, you need to write your report. So you need to have a good writing skills. You need to be able to grammar, spelling. So you need to do that because apart from that, you cannot send your report to others. A, rec a recent series of articles by Listen on the integration and development of communication skills is the accounting. Curriculum shows that we are still more than 30 years after identifying these skills. It's the question of how soft a skill graduate. We are trying to develop accounting students, including communication skills. Although there is no single strategy for how to improve accounting training programs for student communication skills, accounting professors have tried different ways to develop this competency. For example, they can ask a student to present something during the class. With this kind of presentation um, on practice, they can improve the communication skills of the student. The professor can ask the student to report some things and send for the professors. So we haven't a, a special subject about the communication skill. You need to improve your communication skills during the education. So we cannot just take one course about communication skills. Of course, we need to, to learn something about the communication skills, but this is the skills you need to improve it during the talk. Quatches and Maples use tax research cases to develop a student writing and oral communication. Another professor found that the consistent use the securities and exchange commissions guideline improve student writing. And another use another way to improve the communication skills. But the question that arose here is. How effective have effort been in developing the communication skill of accounting students? Because communication skills are one of the most important computer means for accounting graduates. 
but it had has not yet been agreed the specific communication skill should be enhanced or developed in general there is a consistent conscience among accounting professions professors that accounting students have a low level of communication skills. So all the students, because you know, we are all working in digits. We're working about the number, digit, prepare financial statement, doing some adding, subtracting or something with the numbers. So if somebody asks the accountants to speak, so Normally, the accounting student and accounting graduate have a low level of communication skills. So we need to improve. And the another question is, Excuse me, professor. sorry? Excuse me, professor. Yes? Uh, what, do you think, what do you think is a special or the most important unique uh, to understand and to write an essay? Uh, excuse me say again your question is what say what? Uh, how how can we learn to write an essay in a professional way okay so you need you know this is a writing writing is a, a skills you need to practice on that so you need to practice not in only one courses you need to practice during your education for example from the beginning of your education when you learn about the accounting for example principle of accounting you need to practice about the writing and practice about the present something for example uh, your professor can ask you okay you need to, when you, you they finish something, they can ask you, okay, write some report about this. Or they can give you some, for example, uh, financial statement of one company and ask you to, to write some report about that. And also they can ask you to present in the class, in front of your classmates. So you can you can improve step by step your communication skills, and also there is some special course on that as well. Okay. Okay, so we have to use it as much as possible in order to have experience in it. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, are accounting professor qualified to teach? Yeah, this is another question. Are accounting professor qualified to teach critical thinking, ethics, and communication skills? This is the main problem and the main questions. If the professor are not good in critical thinking, in ethics, and in communication skills, how can they teach them these skills to students? So, the question that arose is whether a student's ability to think critically, a student's moral awareness and behavior, and communication skills can be developed in the accounting curriculum. Concern about the ability of accounting professors to teach these sort of skills. Fundamental questions should be asked. Where and how did accounting professors become qualified to assist a student in developing the soft skill or identify for accounting graduate? Okay, if I am a professor in accounting, I need to learn these skills somewhere in universities, in society, in university, in somewhere else. Accounting professors have demonstrated their competence in developing soft skills, but it is suggested that these skills be taught 
to professor to professor professions who have the necessary skills in this area as a part of the normal curriculum. So this is the another problem. Excuse me there, Professor. Sorry, yes, yes. Excuse me. You know, uh, the, the new contemporary trends in writing papers about education in general and in accounting education, especially in this discipline, they said about uh, this problem. They said mm -hmm. there is limitation for the professors because, you know, in the developing countries, unfortunately, they just focus on reading books. Yes. So yes. the books, they, they, it, it, books give you the concepts, the principles, the some mechanisms, mm -hmm. but the new idea just we can find it in the in reading the the articles, especially mm. the recent articles, because yes. once we focus on the books, it's we are not going to to have uh, a good background, good skills. We cannot be qualified even to uh, teach our students. Yes. Yes, that's true. That's true. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, so William concluded the study that professors generally lack a basic concept of critical thinking. This is ninety percent. In fact, they can provide a clear explanation of what critical thinking is. So, have a look, it is interesting. Only 8% of professors were able to identify a specific critical thinking skills. Most professors, 77%, could not explain how to think critically in put your trainings. Have a look, it is interesting result. Only 90% a basic concept of concept critical. 77% could not explain how to think critically in put your training. Okay, if I'm not able to think critically, and if I'm not able to teach my student critically thinking, how can I improve my student? These findings are an example of concern about qualification of accounting professor in this field. As you said, so all the professors just reading the books, 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 and so this is not the way to teach critical thinking. Okay, another question is, how is the importance of technical accounting knowledge? Is the technical accounting knowledge is important or soft skills are important? This study argues that the main purpose of accounting education should be to develop a student technical competence. You know, they say, the main purpose of accounting education is developing the student technical. It's just accounting standards, accounting principles, auditing principles, and, and this. A student without technical competence in accounting cannot think critically about their discipline, nor can they communicate effectively on technical accounting topics. Instead of prioritizing soft skills or broad capabilities, capabilities, accounting training programs should focus on graduate students who can understand and use technical accounting content. It does not argue here that ethics, critical thinking, or communication skills are not important to a successful graduate. It is the state 
that it is not clear whether this skill can be taught and the, the, and the, on the graduate level or not. So, <clears throat> okay, the responsibility on comparative advantage of professors as accounting in structure is to teach technical accounting content to a student. They say, okay, the professor is mainly the first uh, issue of this, the professor is, or the main uh, task of the professor is to teach technical accounting content to a student. It is important to consider what student enroll in accounting training program and why many parents want their children to study accounting. Do you study accounting with the expectation that accounting student will learn about it and get an accounting job after university? A student want to learn technical accounting materials in order to get professional job and a long-term job in accounting. Technical accounting skills are what a student and their parent expect. And this is the core competency that accounting training program should create in their students. Okay, this is the another point of view of the student. And finally, accounting training Training programs should set learning goals so that as far as possible students receive training that prepares them to start working as the accounting professional. Learning objectives do not exist as a set three table for all aspects of accounting education because they consider an objective of the student, the academic Readiness, the programs, resource, resources, and the place of study of the graduate is the program or different. Each of accounting training program should set relevant learning goals for the student and then develop training courses and activities of achieve those goals. One way to classify learning objectives for accounting tra training program is how technical competency and soft skill development. Accounting training should emphasize the soft skills of accounting students, including critical thinking, communication, and ethics. So in this study, it is believed that the accounting professor profession has not clearly identified the soft correction skills required by accounting graduated and accepted definition of these skills how to be proven. This is a skeptic is that even the soft skills that are commonly discussed such as critical thinking, communication, and ethics can be created in most undergraduate accounting students. And whether accounting professors have the ability to develop students, develop does have, he have these skills or not. It is impossible to meet all of these demands in a curriculum model. So priorities must be set for what can be covered. This expectation for most accounting students is to be taught technical competition and soft skills in the undergraduate courses. Technical skills on critical to success in accounting and even more so in public accounting firm, 
where the accounting must have sufficient skills in various fields to meet customers' requirements. So this is the first part of my presentation. This paper, so I've done this paper. If you have any question before I start another paper, please let me know. <clears throat> so if you have any question about the first paper, let me know. Excuse me, Professor. Yes? So for the ethical skills, do you think it's a lack of communication between professors to have low standard of it? Uh, sorry, I missed uh, miss your question. Uh, can we say that the lack, the leak in communication because most professors need to discuss the book in order to understand it so they can have the ethical skills to communicate? If I, if I'm understanding you, you ask me about if this the professor need to. Sorry, I can't get your point. Did the student, the professor need to teach their book? Yes. With this. No, not teaching. I mean, uh, because they leak the ethical skills. Maybe it's because they ethical. leak the ethical. Ethical, yes, Doctor. Okay, yeah, Professor. Okay. They need maybe they need to communicate about the books they read and discuss it so can so they can have more ethical skills. Ethical. Okay. The ethical, you know, the ethical is the human behavior. The ethical is as I explained in this paper, it, you cannot teach ethical in the universe. You can teach, you can, you know, the students learn about the ethical from your behavior, not from what you are seeing. They learn about what and how you are doing. Okay. So, so, so we you, can learn from communication. Yes, you can learn from the communication, you can learn from the behavior, you can learn from the, you know, uh, how the professor behaves, with the student, with the others in the, in the society and this, okay. Because the ethics, you cannot teach the ethics in one courses, okay? The ethics okay. is, you, you need to learn the ethics from your whole of the, the life, from your childhood, when, when you are from, this, from your family, you know? This is all, this is a process all days. Yes, I understand. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so the another paper I'm going to cover very briefly. Okay, we have. Okay, we have, still we have time. This is about the accounting education in a COVID-19 world. This is now. How? we can uh, do accounting education with COVID-19 because the most of the courses are going online instead of the face-to-face -face education. So what is the impact of COVID-19 on accounting education and hence accounting profession? So the impact of COVID-19 on accounting education and hence the accounting profession can be a short-term, medium-term, and long-term impact. So maybe some of the impact of the COVID-19 is short-term, okay? But some of them is mid-term and some of them is long-term impact. Maybe after the COVID-19 we think about that. And we learn something, maybe how, why we didn't do our auditing online? Why we didn't teach some of our class online? So some of this, the changes is short term, medium term, and some of them is long term.
This paper present a compilation of professional reflection from 66 contributors on the impact of the response to COVID-19 in accounting education in 45 different countries around the world. It reveals the community, community on the issue and variability, its response, many positive outcomes, including the creation of opportunities to relay religion, learning, and teaching strategies away from the comfort of traditional formats, but many more that are negative. Primary relaying relating to the impact on faculty and student health and well-being, the accompanying stress. It identified issues that need to be addressed in the recovery and re redesign stage on the management of this crisis. And it sets a new research agenda for students, for studies in accounting education. So have a look in this graph. There is four phases of COVID-19 crisis. The first is establish, establish, stabilization. The second is recovery, redesign, and crisis. Responses, crisis responses. This is all circle, okay? Stabilization, recovery, redesign, crisis responses. So we need to do in this in accounting education and accounting works as well. So there is some structural problems on an online only work. For example, internet access issue. Board band, bandwidth, overload issue, power supply instability, a student with no suitable equipment, a student and a staff whose online classes experience but hindered by lack of quite a space of access to computer because the family was altogether. Shortage of suitable IT for learning or teaching. Personal, particularly faculty, professor, professors, preference for face-to-face -face interaction and in order to uh, toward when they return to the face-to-face -face delivery. And learning resources access issue, for example, to libraries and especially software. Lots of student support within the university system. This is all problem with online work. So the result of this paper, you can see here, as I said, 66 items for 45 countries are um, explored. So you can see here uh, a top 20s, the result of top 20s. Here you can see the first one, the issue emphasized in contribution. The first one is assessment chain in an effort to suit an online environment. This is 50. 3%. Estress faculty is 22. Faculty workload significantly increase 20. Beyond including face to face will be new normal. Okay, you can see the result here. So a student natural, their audio, and there is a lot of uh, things. It's all up to 66, but this is uh, more, most 20s. 
of this. Okay, <clears throat> there is another paper. It's called, I'll just go through this because we haven't enough time to go through the detail of the paper. I'll just uh, go through the paper very briefly. Uh, I will send the papers, uh, full paper to, to you. If you have any questions about that, I can, you can ask the question. Okay, the COVID-19 and digitalization, accounting education, empirical evidence from Gulf Corporation countries or concerns. This is another paper. So for digitizing accounting education. If you have a look here, the purpose of this paper, the main objective of this study is to in investigate the effect of COVID-19 of accounting education in a higher education from the Gulf Corporation can see. The methodology is just going to about questionnaire and finding this study pressure the highest sum of the emergent issue faced during the pandemic, partlying the aspect of the COVID-19 and digitizing accounting education and its effect on the future direction of digital education. So this is the first paper doing about the COVID-19. And here you can see the result. Sorry, it's very, you know, let me have a look let, if you, if I can do in biggest, no, sorry. So this is about the survey, how about the genders and what's the age of the group and some um, statistical, uh, statistical numbers here you can see in this paper. So the main, uh, so result is here, you can see the result. For example, in the figure one, the question is COVID-19 pandemic made an important of the accounting student engagement with, uh, I think, uh, excuse me, I, can, I cannot see, let me do it biggest. Okay, so here, yes. Uh, so you can see the result. The strongly agree is 40%. Strongly, um, or oh, the agree is 33 percent. And this, the another question is because of the quick 19 pandemic, the midterm and our final exam wage uh, conducted online with an open exam type. So you can see them. Uh, the most answer is four is uh, about 65%. And the figure three is uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, I believe that totally digitalization accounting education would be compulsory around the goal, around the goal above. So you can see both uh, the most answer is four, it's about 50%. Okay, here is another question result. For example, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, in my opinion, digitalization of accounting education would be Percy an educational requirement. So you can see it still is 50 for number four. So you can see more question here and answer. Is another question here and another result here. So you can see all participants, the main participants are good about the accounting education and digitalization. So the, another paper 
I'm going to go through that is accounting education, the post quid board, looking into the mirror of rise. <clears throat> Any questions so far? <clears throat> Sorry, can you hear me? <clears throat> yes? Yes, we can. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, the another paper is Accounting Education is post squid uh, work looking into the mirror array. So what's happened here? <clears throat> Using the polls created by COVID-19 pandemic, this presentation explains open the reflection offered by many accounting academy across the world. Many questions about where we find ourselves in our ongoing effort of education and what will be possible going forward exist. Consider Several dimensions, including the technology we use, what we attempt to teach and organization that we use, and a student and faculty behavior raised into center of what we, be, we become of accounting education at this critical generation. And few answers are certain. <clears throat> Accounting education recently published a special issue is which accounting academic all over the world conducted the response to the pandemic, offering some idea about lesson learned. The forum should make us painfully aware that this was unpredicted worldwide even that had to meet rapidly and deceitfully and it served to remind us to improve the scope of our community and its communication our purpose so this is a lot in thing a lot of things in this paper about what we should do after quite 19 so as this is a lot of things, so I'm just going to through the some of them at technology pros and cons where there are some uh, without the technology we cannot go through uh, the education. It's not possible to educate without technology. So there is some uh, pros and cons in technology and using technology here you can see that. So I'm just go through that to. Uh, to pass that and the fundamental recommendation of uh, uh, teaching is here by making impossible to continue with the typically with a student the pandemic has forced a fundamental question to this surface which should an instructor do this a student and what should an instructor instructor expects the students in between those meetings, students were expected to read the material in advance of the class. And something else, here you can see one lecturer would be replaced by video and beat out, by review, by view outside of the class, by students who needed the value added that the instructor could bring beyond the reading and text and other print material. So if go through that, pandemic can also be excused. Okay, pandemic sometimes is the excuse for the student, for the teachers, for the professor, is sometimes be excused. So something's more, uh, the condition, my stress of a student behavior, changing of the faculty, and the organization view, there is some things in this paper. So 
we go through the conclusion of these papers, we need to have a serious debate about the direction in which pandemic has, and everyone says, change everything. Too much in academic just seems to happen. Without contemplating of alternative and becomes de facto values of what we throw. Lacking of crystal ball, this thought reflection on offer, knowing that one day this pandemic will be over. This is some obvious lessons that accounting education should take away from COVID-19 pandemic that began in early 2020. They should not be uh, obscured by the methodology, the surrounds and industry, and higher education is very much part of the world, not separate from that. When we talk of the real world, we are purposeful, purposefully engaging in the potentially this connectual rotial article, the uh, artifice. As a part of the world, the strength in the 22, which is really accounting education, should be better prepared to change with the world. Better change management and value, valuability of contingency plans present themselves as the proverbial low hanging fruit for all. So there is more, uh, some more conclusion and so Harry, perhaps we need to want uh, what we have and separate the essential from the full food. So uh, this is, <coughs> There is another paper, which is a, a new approach of online accounting education. Uh, so uh, this is too much to say about that. So new approach of online accounting education, say about the grow up needs of online education. So we need to improve it. What is online education? At the strength and weakness of online education. Degree. The profession can trust the future of online accounting education and also the future of accounting. Advance in technology and taking accounting to new levels. Whether you are a an accounting professional looking to stay on the cutting edge of the industry or as a spring newcomer. You will want to understand the following technology that are emerging in the accounting professions. Cloud computing, automated accounting takes tasks, blockchain technology, and required skills for future accounting professionals. So if you're going to conclude this person, this part, I can say e-learning seems before coming trend. It has been extending widespread the online method of learning is based swift for everyone, depending on their availability and confer. Many people choose to learn at convenient time. This enable the learner to access updated content whenever they want it. Due to wide spread of benefit, it gives to students. In conclusion, e-learning has become quite popular among the students across the board, particularly during the lockdown period due to the COVID-19 pandemic. E-learning is not the result of the current situation crisis. Due to outcome of a current values, current values is most 
countries around the world. It is transformation into a pandemic prevented to the continuation of the educational process in the traditional face-to-face -face or in all educational institutions at all levels. Consequently, many university education structures adopt the learning system, whether completely or partially, or rise the efficiency and effectiveness of the educational process and advance is outward uh, toward achieving its goals during the COVID-19 pandemic crisis. Okay, thank you very much for all of you. If you have any questions, so I leave sometimes for questions. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, ask your questions. Sorry, or just uh, conclude all of the papers. I will send the, all of the materials to you uh, so you can go through all of the material in detail if you need. Hello, sir. Hi. Thank you. Can I have a, I have a question? Please? Yes, please. Uh, do you give us a certificate for this presentation? I think, I think the university give you a certificate, yes. Yes, university give you the certificate. Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me, Professor. Yes? Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you very much for your great presentation and you could collect a great idea and present a great idea about this uh, vital topic. So you have our respect and thank you so much. But I want to share you something uh, regarding the the paper, not the last one, before the last one. Okay. Uh, the uh, the authors, they were talking about the post-COVID-19. Okay, okay. Uh, to me, because this is something related to the forecasting in the future. Now yes. we are Now we are living. Now it's the, the time for it during the COVID-19. Yes. And as you know, the new generations with the COVID-19s and the dangers that uh, happened around the world. So uh, to me, I think one of the limitations of this paper, because uh, the authors are talking about the, the, the future, which is yes. unknown future. Yes. You agree with me? I think they, they should talk about the during COVID-19. That's what we really needed. Mm -hmm. But once once they talk about the future and what is gonna be in the future i think it's uh, un unuseful uh, for the authors for the readers for the audience to get some useful information regarding this very vital topic so okay as you see, as you see i present two three different papers uh, one of uh, 12 papers is during the covid 19 and one of them is after the COVID-19. You, uh, you write, you need to do what you are doing, you need to do today. But remember, we need to prepare ourselves for the future. To somehow, if we can, you know, predict something in the future, we can prepare ourselves. For example, before COVID-19, if some educational sectors and, in the, and or industrial sectors predict the COVID-19 in the future, for example, in, in for example, 2017 and 2018, okay? Uh -huh. Okay. If you, you can predict something about the future, so you can you know, prepare, you need to, you can, you know, uh, prepare yourself for the future. So if you can do something about the future, do the future is just guess, it's not, you know, exact. The author is just, you know, thinking about the after COVID-19. But as you see, 
they said, okay, after the COVID-19, something is totally different with the before. For example, you can see some things is totally different with the before COVID-19. For example, if the COVID-19 happened, uh, some behavior in your life, in your, you know, in your education is totally different. So these authors think or say something or predict something about the future. So if something is happening, for example, if you go to some website, you can see what will be accounting, for example, in 2050. How we need, why we need this? Because we need to prepare ourselves for the future. So I think to somehow this paper is good, but in your point of view, some of your point of view is okay, so we need something now. So it's okay. So, uh, dear professor, if there is no development in the technology, yes, definitely this is correct. But as yes. you know, the technology and other yes. things related to technology is yes. growing very rapidly. So you cannot put in our mind the forecasting in the coming future, especially after uh, several years. Yes. Because the, the technology is, is growing very rapidly. So of even course. the... You agree with me, correct? Yes, yes, right. Yes. Yeah. 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 I agree with you. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Tariq. I think yeah, I'm right, Tariq. Yeah, yeah I, I have uh, I'm I'm a lecturer and I have PhD in accounting. Oh very uh, good. College, yeah, yeah, in College of Administration and Economics, University of Basra. So very it's very, very interested uh, what very you good uh, presenting. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, professor uh, yeah, I will. I gi will give you my email address. Okay. Thanks so uh, much. So um, uh, we can, you know, we can communicate with email, and Thanks also so if you, if you are interested, we have we have uh, we can share some lecturer. Okay. Yes. I, I already I already published a paper about COVID nineteen. Oh, already, really? yeah, and its effect on the declining in the economy in the, around the world, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a good uh, conclusion and recommendations. Uh, this year I published. Thank you oh, very much. Really? It's an honor, to, an honor to me to have such a collaboration with you. Thanks a lot. Okay, I will. I send my. Uh, email address um.ac.ir and also this is my uh, Iranian number this is you know you can send you can send all anybody can send me uh, through the whatsapp uh, no, no, no. yeah this is I... my Iranian number this is my intelligent so. oh, okay um, so we can do something, yeah, together. It's Thank very you good. very much. It's, it's honor yeah. to me. As you said, that's the Shema Darna. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, say, Khoda Nigahdara, yeah, Khoda Nigahdara. Say, I have a lot of a lot of Iraqi students, but sorry, I, I'm. I'm not good in Arabic language. Ustad, me gim ma'asalame. Ma'asalama, yeah, ma'asalama. Yes, that's great. Okay. Ma'asalama, thank you very much. Thank you. Very good, very good. Joseph, thank you, Joseph. I don't know whether the coordinator is there or not. Professor, 
فردوسی یونیورسیتی آف مشهد آها من الان مشهد هستم بله باش ممنون بله گفتم اگه اینجایی در خدمتتون باشیم خیلی ممنون و سپاسگزارم التماس دعا داریم در عراق که خوش باشید شما هم تشریف آوردیم مشهد فردوسی آف یونیورسیتی ما در خدمتتون هستیم در دانشگاه فردوسی ممنون خیلی ممنون از شما خدا نگهدار خدا نگهدار خدا نگهدار Anwar? Anwar is there or not? Okay, I think Anwar is not there. Okay, Khodani Gahdar. Khodani Gahdar.